Welcome to Community America Ballpark. I am Matt Folks, Director of Media Relations, along with Hall of Famer Frank White, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Needs to be in the Hall of Fame. Whole other issue, another time we'll talk about that. But uh, Friday night, July 6th, you might be watching this after that, but Friday night, July 6th, an awesome event out here at Community America. And uh, Frank and your wife, Teresa, and really, you're giving uh, Teresa all the props for this, but some, some past all-stars are going to be here and just some guys who have really... Frank, in my opinion, guys who are important to the baseball history here in Kansas City. Well, that's right, Matt. And uh, Teresa and I, we talked about it, and uh, she talked to Big John Mayberry, and, and they, she asked him what he what they had going during the All Star break, and he really didn't know at that time. And so she's a, she just really felt that she could really put something together that'd be real special, and 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 not only to honor uh, some former All Stars from the Royals, but really to celebrate uh, Amos Otis and John Mayberry for being in the 1973 All Star game. And we just thought that it would be, be, we thought that would be something that needed to be highlighted. We thought that this should, should, should be special for those guys. And, mm -hmm. and that the fans here at uh, Community America Park get an opportunity to see the Royals two All-Stars from the last All-Star here in Kansas City. And I've had a chance uh, to talk with both AO and, and Big John about their moment in 73. And it, it's amazing because, you know, AO played in the World Series and played in several, five All-Star games, I guess, and uh, just had some great moments as a baseball player, but when you talk to him about 73, he, he lights up a little bit more. Well, I mean, I think that's because it was here. Uh, he was an all-star, and, and you go back and look at some of the names of the guys that were in that all-star yeah. game, you know, from Reggie Jackson to Johnny Bench, Nolan Ryan, Willie Davis. I mean, there was a lot of great pl players that are in the Hall of Fame now that were in that, in that all-star game, and I think to be a part of those guys and to be in the game, get a base hit in the game, I think that's what it's all about, and uh, just make a, a good showing in front of the home crowd, and and hopefully uh, have your uh, league come out on top. And we'll have we'll get a video with Amos while he's here over the weekend because, you know, again, some of the stories he tells just about that moment, and he ended up starting in center field, and Bobby Mercer was the one voted in center field, and Bobby said, "Ao, this is your home. You need to." You know, you, you need to be starting in center field. And he said, from that moment on, I had a great relationship with Bobby Mercer. <laughs> well, I think any time uh, a star like uh, like Bobby, you know, that he's a Yankee, you know, and the Yankees always got preference uh, all the time. <laughs> so, any you know, for him to recognize uh, where he was, and, and it's also saying that he recognized Amos as an excellent center fielder, and, and to be able to step aside and let him start in that game is just tremendous. And I, and I think that's why uh, when you're dealing with uh, athletes and at that level, you know, they do more than just play the game. You know, they think about where they are and who they're surrounded by. Yeah. And when you talk about some of the great All-Stars, it was Willie Mays, I think, 24th and final All-Star game. Hank Aaron, it might have been his 22nd or 23rd, something like that. So just some great players in 73. We'll, we'll talk to Big John and <laughs> A.O. about that. But so here's, here's the lineup. Besides Frank, Freddie Patek, Amos Otis, John Mayberry, Mayberry, we've already talked about them, Willie Wilson, Hal McRae is coming back. And Mickey Cobb trainer, am I m I'm missing somebody? Well, I don't Willie Wilson. Willie Wilson well, will be here, yes. Uh -huh. So it's a, it's a really a cool lineup. And, and I think for you, I mean, just you and I talking about it off camera, uh, you're pretty excited about seeing these guys. Well, I am. I, I'm really excited, uh, you know, not only about seeing our guys, but uh, just to really get that winning feeling. You know, these guys were winners, and these guys brought everything to the table. You know, Freddie, great defense at shortstop. Uh, Big John, smoothness at first base. Uh, his home run prowess, his ability to hit. Mm -hmm. Amos Otis, who I think is the best fundamental player I've ever played with. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was just nothing he couldn't do on the field, from base running to reading pitchers to playing defense, uh, just managing the game from center field. Willie Wilson, uh, I mean, he made left field and right field as happy because he covered all the ground. and. And just to be able to see a guy of his athletic ability and, and be able to, uh, you know, just you know, hit 13 inside the park home runs in his mm -hmm. career and, and win a gold glove in left field. I mean, he was even a batting champion in 1982. Right. So you go down that line and Hal McRae, one of the toughest players I've ever, I've ever played with, one of the smartest players I've ever played with, and, and he knew how to game. Uh, he knew how to play the game. He, he resurrected his swing and... And, and he was just one of the, he was probably the best DH in, in baseball history, in my opinion, because I thought he was just that good. And then you go just go on down the line, you know, for, from uh, Mickey Cobb, our 24 hour trainer, who really worked hard to get himself in a position to be a major league trainer and, 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 do, and do a great job at it. And, and I'm just so happy that these guys are able to come here, have their night, feel good about the All Star game being here in Kansas City, and, then, and definitely feel good about the fact that they're being celebrated um, uh, this weekend. And as I think 
to that list of names and, and some people you guys, you and I have talked about over the past with Big John, you, you say you could, you know, he would just say throw it, just keep the ball down, yeah, throw wherever you want, just keep it low. Nice soft hands, I tell you. He said just throw it anywhere but, but up, you know, because, <laughs> I mean, he could help you. He has such a good wingspan, and he has such soft hands to pick the ball out of the dirt, and, and yeah, he just gave you so much, uh, so much confidence uh, when he played first base. And then Freddie, a lot of time, you know, a lot of longtime Royals fans remember Freddie and Cookie Rojas playing together, and then you took Cookie's spot at second. And uh, I know Freddie was just instrumental in helping bring you along, just in that middle infield spot. Well, Freddie was the first guy that taught me how to be tough up the middle. I mean, uh, back in those days when you didn't have sliding rules, you had to be tough up the middle. You had to be willing to throw the ball through the runner and not try to throw the ball over the runner and, and let him take you out in the left field. And, and so he, he was low to the ground, and he came through uh, so fast on a double play. And he had such a strong arm that if guys didn't get down, you know, they would, they would get hurt. So basically he taught, he taught me how to, to just go to the base, be more aggressive, and throwing the ball to first base. Don't let the runner deflect, you know, deflect you in any way. Just go right through him, make it up, you know, leave it up to him to get out of the way. And I think that's what I really uh, remember about Freddie, just the ground he covered, the strong arm, uh, just a fun guy to watch. I mean, He's also another guy that was still in 60 bases a year. And again, that's Friday night, July 6th, out here at Community America Ballpark. As the T-Bones on the field will be taking on Sioux Falls, but you'll be able to get uh, a couple glimpses of these guys before the game, and then afterwards you get a chance to uh, get some autographs. We have information on the Facebook and on our website about fees for the autographs, uh, which part of which is going to charity, but uh, you want to check that out. Now, before I let you go, I mean, since we're, we're talking about All-Stars and – you obviously are one of them. Just when you think about your all-star memories overall, is there something that stands out most to you? Well, really the biggest thing is when I, the first uh, four that I went to, you, you know you're going to just get one at bat, and, and I'm sorry, the first three out of four, then you, you, you want to make the best of it, so they weren't too good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the one time I did start in Seattle, I, I still wasn't very good offensively. But, but I, I think the, the 86 all-star game, when I came off the bench to pinch hit, uh, it was a tie game, and – and I hit a, a solo home run off of uh, Mike Scott in his hometown of Houston, which was neat. Then I, I think that was probably the thing that you think about as a kid, hitting an all-star home run, hitting a World Series home run, and, and winning the game. So I was able to get that done. Well, and again, with going back to AO, he says that, you know, that moment in 73 for him, and again, it is largely because it was at Royal Stadium and in front of the hometown fans, but he says, you know, that was as big of a deal to me, as big of a moment as, as playing in a World Series. Well, Amos was uh, was smart. I mean, he was real smart, and and I don't think he got credit for being the type of player that he was. I mean, I mean, when you look at uh, John Watson still in 36 bases, and Amos showed him how to do it. You know, I mean, Amos could pick pitchers apart. He he showed us the walking lead. He showed us how to how to uh, you know cross over and stay low. He he taught us how to look for certain things on pitchers that can give us an edge. I mean, he was such a smart player that. Uh, Everybody thought that he was loafing a lot of times. He was so smooth in center field. But, but you'll never see a center fielder uh, with that type of knowledge um, in Kansas City ever again because he managed the game very well. He never threw out runners. He didn't think he had a chance to throw out. And he could just see the whole field. And he, and he really uh, helped all of us in, in a lot of different areas. And Amos did win a couple steak dinners from betting guys he could steal second standing up. Oh, did, yeah. you, did you ever lose a bet to him? No, but, uh, you know, I remember um, – uh, I think it was 72, and uh, Marty Patton was pitching for the Brewers, and I was at a game at, uh, at the old stadium, and, and Amos had told me the story about he told the guys before the game he was going to steal five bases that night, and they going to steal three of them standing up, and he sure did. <laughs> I mean, he was just he was an excellent, excellent ball player. So, again, Amos Otis, Frank White, John Mayberry, Hal McRae, uh, Willie Wilson, Mickey Cobb, Freddie Potek, all these guys are going to be here. Friday night, July 6th, you want to come out to the ballpark I and mean, see good baseball, but uh, especially to see these guys well. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, it's going to be great. I mean, I'm always the guy on the field. They're up in the, in the suite having fun and, and, <laughs> and watching the game and hobnobbing and things like that. But, but really, though, I, I think it's going. I'm going to have a great time just watching those guys have a great time, and, and it's going to be fun for me, and, and I'll be clapping as loud as the fans are when the, when the players are announced, and, and I'm just more like eye candy. So I'll, I'll just mix in and go from there. But these guys are the ones that – that I really, uh, that and me and Teresa really wanted to celebrate uh, Friday night. So again, we're going to give props to Frank's wife Teresa because she, you know, 
pulled all this together. Oh, yeah. So yeah, she's nervous. <laughs> she just wants everybody to show up on time, <laughs> and well. and that's that's always the biggest uh, thing when you put something like this together is making sure everybody's where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be, and and once you can, you know get get uh the confidence that that's that's happening then that's when you really relax and try to have a good time but as so long as somebody's missing and <laughs> everybody everybody's on, the nerves get a little shaky after that but but i i, I tell you i pat her on the back she that was this is the first attempt to do this and and just think that thankful that she had somebody like chris brown here with the mm -hmm. t-bones to really work with her and and help her through it so it was great so forget about the temperatures it'll be 100 and some odd degrees as you know frank's been outside with bp today but uh Friday night, come out here to Community America Ballpark. He is Frank White. I'm Matt Folks, and uh, he's eye candy. <laughs>